Hey everybody and welcome to Chew Stream where we talk about art and life as an artist. I'm your host Bobby Chu and of course if you were here last week for the first illustration challenge with Bobby, that's me. Uh, this uh, that, that was really fun and we decided to do a second one or I decided to do a second one so you can go to the details of this YouTube video and you can find the link to this photo. Here's the challenge. Complete an illustration in 90 minutes based on this photo. You don't have to copy it. You can copy it if you like. You can do something inspired by it as, as well. Okay, so that is the challenge here today. And I will be doing this with you or actually I've kind of already done this. Um, so this way I can answer your questions and read your questions, you know, and I don't have to stop painting, but the whole entire idea is, um, over the years, a lot of people have asked, how do you do this? How do you learn that? Well, I figured let's just do this together and, um, y you know, you can see exactly how I train and you could train with me. Okay, and a big part of this, when I'm training, when I'm learning art, uh, a lot of it you can't really see, right? Because you don't really know what's, what's happening inside my head. And inside my head, that's what I'm here for, of course, to enlighten you on what happens. Uh, what are the little nuts and bolts rolling around in my head? In my head, I'm thinking, as I'm painting this, I'm thinking, how do I paint this um, just out of my head, right? And that's, that's what I'm doing here, actually. I'm just painting this whole entire painting straight out of my head because I painted it already six times. That was the other thing that I told everybody last week, um, I paint, I study things more than once, right? And that's a very important thing to talk about here because a lot of times we draw the same things maybe once, maybe twice, and then we go, we studied this, yay, let's move on to something else. But did you get everything out of it? No, probably not. Um, this way of studying, I know my end result is I need to challenge myself and paint this thing without even looking at it, right? And because of that, you will start to study these images a lot differently um, with different kinds of importance. And so that's, that's what I wanted to kind of do with you guys. So you can ask your questions. Of course, you can ask questions as always on slido.com. Okay. And you can put in the hashtag chew stream. You can find these details also in the details of this video. Uh, if you caught this live, you can also see on there that there's a discord channel. If you want to just call in and talk to me and ask your questions live. If you know me, if you're a friend, come on in. The water's warm. It'd be nice to hear a for, uh, familiar voice, okay? So that being said, let's go to, let's go to uh, the questions here. Okay, so the very first question comes from Anonymous and this comes from slido.com. You can ask your questions anonymous. That's why I like Slido. You don't have to sign up for a, an account or anything. But the very first question is, how do you motivate yourself to practice when you're not getting the results that you want? You don't like your drawings. Well, that that's the frustration is the bouncer at the door. You know, you got to be cool with frustration. Um, it's kind of like just observe it go wow i am really frustrated and then keep going and and try to change your focus to what is your idea of um success here you know is it to draw a great drawing or is it to eventually have 
amazing talents so that you can draw amazing drawings all the time? You know, uh, the smart answer is the second one, of course. So what does that entail? What that entails is consistency, right? The consistency of your actions will create a talent. So do your time. There's a bunch of times when I'm painting this cat, right? And it does not look good. Most of these I did not like. And I'll tell you why. It's because usually if I'm going to, you know, paint a cat, I wouldn't do it in an hour. Especially a full-on cat like this. You know, like look at each of these cats are completely different. They look different. Um, it's kind of funny that way. And I could paint them very, very uh, representational, very, very exact if I wanted to, uh, but it just takes more time, as you know, right? You can noodle along and you can make just the drawing in uh, 90 minutes, but then if you keep going, um, well, I didn't, you might not have enough time to do a three, six hour study. So this is very much for those of you that have jobs, that have things to do, that want to stay artistically fit. Let's do a 90 minute illustration challenge each day. Keep ourselves motivated and keep ourselves, uh, you know, consistently going at it until we get the results that we want. So I hope that answered your question. Hassan, right on, an actual name. Big shouts out to Hassan. Hassan says, Hi Bobby, what's your opinion about investing in the iPad as a concept artist? Do you think it's a good device to pr produce uh, artwork as a professional? For sketches, yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, it's really, really intuitive. I love it. Uh, as hardcore realistic completely rendered paintings um i have you know a combination would be good too so as long as you are not kind of deciding between a computer and an ipad i i would invest in an ipad you know if you already had a computer or if you already have a computer and uh you're thinking about adding an ipad to your repertoire iPads are awesome because you can, it, they're just so mobile and, uh, you know, programs like Procreate really makes the, the f fluidity of your drawing and your creation and your uh, ideation, you know, creation of ideas so much more fluid, so much easier. I love it. It's awesome. All right, so let's see. I also want to, let me just put up the reference image up here. And as I mentioned, I am on Discord. If you want to join in, you can see the details in the uh, comments below. Or sorry, in the details of the video below. All right. Let's put the reference back here. And this reference comes from unsplash.com. Uh, unsplash.com, I am not affiliated with them, but they are, it's a wonderful site that uh, has all these photos on there um, and they're all copyright free so big shouts out to them they don't even ask for a credit uh, but I'll give them credit anyways that's where I got it from and if you go to the details the link uh, for this reference photo you can also see the artist the pho the photographer that took the photo all right max something anyhow let's go to another question here so another question says let's see 
Anonymous, do you have any advice to go against the frustration of not liking your art? I often see myself hating what I am painting and it makes me want to stop. Okay, let's talk about this again. You know, really so much of our goals, so many of our goals these days, I find in general, anyways, in general, so many of our goals are so immediate. And maybe I might have a different definition of immediacy than other people out there. But what I'm talking about is anything between one day to one year. I consider that a relatively short uh, goal. We got to think long term if you want to be that 0.1%, 0 0.05, 0 0.01% of uh, artists out there. You know, everybody's thinking, okay, yeah, long-term goal would be, I'm going to try this for a year. I don't think that way. I think about things like, okay, what do I want to try to accomplish in the next 10 years? Five years to 10 years. I try to aim for 10 years. You know what this does? What this does is it creates a lifetime of commitment, pretty much. Not that 10 years is a lifetime, but you know what I mean. A long-term commitment. And it also makes you really be very selective of the goals that you are going for. So if it's a goal of drawing and it's a 10-year goal, then you're thinking, wow, my 10-year goal here would be to draw something that is, you know, Ian McKegg level or something like that. Like something really high, you know, let's, if you have a one-year goal, what's your ultimate goal there? I don't know. It's probably not too hot, right? Um Yeah, that's, that's why I kind of say, have your goals be about what is, what do you want to accomplish in the long run? And what you want to accomplish in the long run here, if you're doing drawings, is that you want to consistently draw every day. Every day, you're going to take out some little bit of time and just, you know, exercise that brain muscle and, uh, get better at art. And so one thing I would love to recommend, this is something everybody can do. It's all for free. You know, you could do the same thing as me and paint each one of these challenges. You can paint them, you know, six times. And then the last time you put it away, just like what I did. You know, this whole entire video was done like this with no reference, right? Um, so I want to kind of show that. That's the wonderful test where you can really see, okay, yeah, I did learn this. I did learn that. Wow, I learned this too. That's awesome. All right. Next question here is, oh, by the way, before we go on to the next question, for those of you that are doing this challenge, when you upload it online, Hashtag 90 minute art challenge. You see the little hashtag in the corner there? I want to share something with you guys. This is really fun. Let's see here. Ch check out these. These are from last week, Twitter and stuff. Oh, I. Somebody on Discord. Hello. Hello. Oh, if hello. I, if you are on Discord, make sure that you um, mute YouTube so you don't hear everything twice. Hi. What's your uh, name? Where are you from? Hi. I'm CJ Rusoto. Hey, CJ. How's it going? I will see your name in there. Good to hear from uh, you. Uh, yeah, I just having 
I am um, 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 I'm trying to work on my story for my comic and also work on character designs and I just trying to get the most out of this quarantine so when it's over I at least I can do more than I I was doing before it started. Right on. That's fantastic to hear. Do you have any advice for it? Uh, well, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm studying. I'm studying uh, photographs. I'm studying things at each day, you know. And I made a commitment to myself to do at least one hour of studies each day. Uh, so when this whole entire thing blows over, uh, my art would have evolved. That's the hopes. That's the plan. So you could, you know, you could do so many different things. You could take a class. Of course, there's there's a new class on schoolism, Procreate with uh, Nikolai uh, Lockerston. Um, and I plan on taking that class too. But... Otherwise, if you want to do something for free, you could do these art challenges, uh, you know, each week. And if you want to go hardcore, you could do the challenges the way that I'm doing it, which is I'm doing, I'm painting the painting six times in different ways. And then the last time, the seventh time, I don't use the reference at all. You know, when you do yeah. that, you start to learn a lot. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, that's, that's another thing I need to important is um, I'm practicing more than I'm producing, and I would like to um, switch that. Ah, well, in this way, you see, my seventh painting is producing. But then I also like to think about things kind of like, um, kind of like an athlete. You know, if you're a basketball player, baseball player or something, well, maybe not baseball, but say football player. There you go. A football player plays once a week, but they're training every day. You know, so producing that painting, I'm going to try to produce a painting once a week, but I'm training every day. Because my whole entire point of doing all this is not to produce, it's really to learn. And uh, yeah, if you feel that way, that you aren't producing stuff, maybe it's in the way that you are studying, that your studying doesn't allow you um, room for creativity. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, because I'm, I'm currently in a situation where like, um, um, before I didn't have this much access to the internet, so too much access to content is make is give me too much to choose from them. Oh, because before I, <laughs> yeah, you know, like choices. Oh my goodness! Wait until, think about this. Uh, y you know, you become a really great, successful artist, and then uh, people love the project that you worked on, and then. You know, five different people all ask you to work on the project that they're working on now. And they're all really great projects. If you take all of them, you will do badly, most likely, because you won't be able to give your 100%. So being able to choose the things that you should do, right, and uh, steer away from looking at too much stuff, choosing too many things, that's an important skill in itself. Especially when you um, start to become more and more successful, that ability to choose what you'll focus on will become more and more important. Uh, I almost got caught in it. I don't know if you know about the uh, six fan arts hashtag, CJ, but a lot of people... Yes, I was planning to do that. Too. Yes, yes. I put it up there on my Instagram for a second. And, you know, like 400, 500 comments later, I look at it. I'm like, I don't have time to do this. 
So then I, I just took it off my page and I was like, no, I got to stay focused. So there you go. I okay. hope you like the answer. Uh, thank you so much for your call, CJ. Okay. Okay, enjoy your practice. Thank you. Awesome. Hi, Bobby. Hey. We, uh, we have another question of Le uh, Loni, I think. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Loni. Hi. Um, I want to... Um, Oh my god, I'm so nervous, sorry. <laughs> oh, no problem, no problem. Maybe we could start off with where you're from. Um, I'm from Germany. Oh, right on. Love Germany. Yeah, um, I want to become a game artist. Uh-huh. And uh, I want to go to university. And you have to have a portfolio for that. And my question is, uh, when do you know if my artwork is good enough for my portfolio? Ah. And uh, so how do you decide this is good and this is not so good? Uh, do you know any students that go to the school already? Because that would be a great, you know, that that would probably be a great way to see uh, what level of art you're at for that school. I know when yeah, I but, tried to oh. apply for school, I, I sent in all the wrong stuff. You know, they said, oh, send in a drawing of the person or whatever. I didn't know what they really wanted either. Um, and I didn't get in the first time because I didn't give them the right stuff. So it yeah, might... Yeah, that happens to me. Yeah, right? So it might be good to um, reach out and, and find students that already go to that school, maybe through hashtags or things like that, and ask them... Uh, you know, if they could look at your work, because also when you're asking uh, perhaps a student that goes to that school, they might have a lot more time than, say, a professional with, uh, you know, half a million followers or something like that. Right. Yeah, that's my thought anyways. OK, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, good luck. Good luck. Right on. Thanks. Yeah, I also wanted to just share a few more of these really cool little, you know, look at that one. That was cool, too. Um, entries from last week's. This is awesome. Whoa, my internet is chugging. Okay, yeah, see? Look at that one. That one's awesome you know so each week I'll share a few of the uh, studies from the previous week and of course you can go and do this one as well if you just look for uh, the very first 90 minute art challenge that one was great right I like this one this one was great who is this internet Come on, internet. There we go. Emily Chu. Oh, same last name as me. Look at that. Fantastic, Emily. All right, let's go back to the painting. Yeah, so hopefully that'll encourage everybody to also do the exercise and then post it. I'll share a bunch each week. That'll be fun. All right, why don't we go to another question here? And uh, this next question comes from Slavomir. Is there such thing as overstudying the image? When do you know if you learn enough? That's a great question. Um, there probably is. There's, you know what? It's like exercising. There's wrong ways to exercise as well. And that's why it it's important for you to see how I will do these exercises too. I'm actually building a course right now where it goes through all the other six previous paintings that I did and how did I train, how did I think about the reference, what were my objectives as I was painting it, 
and you would do those exercises with me and then you could you know you could hear my thoughts but you could also you're painting and drawing you're doing the the exercise you look up and you could see where i'm at you could also see how did i approach it how did i start it what did what details did i leave out what details did i concentrate on because that's really interesting as well when you start to see what did people find important and how did they represent it you know how did they represent a complex foliage for example or something like that that can be very very eye-opening so that's the other um, reason for this video you know these videos of seeing me doing these challenges but um yeah that course is gonna come out soon i think it should be probably in a month or so all right let's go on to another question but that was a good one i like that one by slavomir can you ever study too much definitely you could study too much but then you could also spend a ton of time on just one thing as long as you are studying the right things about it you know you're constantly studying new things about it stuff like that uh, big shouts out to everybody in the YouTube chat too I could see it just blowing up it's really nice to see a lot of uh, familiar faces or familiar names and such I see a Noah in there in in Israel hey Noah uh, and a bunch more. All right, let's go on to another question here. Anonymous asks, or says, I want to pursue art as a career, but I'm afraid that my sister will not like my works. Wow. That's interesting. I wonder, you know, why you like to do art. Is it for your sister's approval? You know, I just... Go ahead. Whoa, what the heck? Something's listening to me. Let me go turn off that iPad. Okay. I don't know about you guys, if you have like one of those um, devices that you can voice command and stuff. That is some like creepy stuff, I'm telling you. Like, what are you doing listening to me? Why are you talking to me right now? Uh, have you always been listening? <laughs> okay, so Anonymous, do your art for yourself. You know, one of the big challenges, and this is really like just a general thing for everybody, um, for myself included, a big long-term goal for me, and generally I think it should be for everybody, is to uh, work on yourself, right? And to get your mind right. Um, some people... And I'm totally guilty of this as well. I've been like this before, where it's like you are seeking people's approval. You're doing things for other people um, and they don't like it, right? Or you're just doing things for the wrong reasons. Uh, a lot of times you want to just think about why are you actually doing these things? Well, that's what I do anyways. I try to think, is that for the right reason? Should there be a better goal? Like, for example, I used to get really... I, I remember getting so nervous, so worked up over, uh, will I get this job that I went in for, did a big pitch, and then I'm waiting to hear back. And I was so nervous and everything, and that energy really dictated a lot of the things that I ended up doing afterwards. You know, I'm, I'm sitting there all nervous. I'm not really thinking to do more art. I'm not really thinking to do much of anything except for sit there and think, what did I say? What did I do? You know, that kind of stuff. Uh, it wasn't helpful. Especially in times like this, we might 
be so concerned about all of these things uh, that are out there. You know, will I be safe and all this stuff. The only thing that we can do is do the things that we can do. And those are the things that we should care about. And those are the things that we should focus on, right? Does your sister like your art? I don't know. Does my, does my dad like my art? I don't know. I think he likes me, so he says he likes my art. But if he didn't know me and he saw my art out there in the world, would he like it? No. Pretty sure no. Does that, would I like, would I want him to like it? Yeah, of course. But I've come to grips with that a long time ago. Where it's like, if he likes it, he likes it. That's great. But um, I can't control that. And the only thing I can control is uh, the art that I do. You know, how much effort am I putting into it? My goals. Uh, you know, let me just concentrate on that. And that's what we should all kind of concentrate on. You know, will the virus get us? I don't know. But what can we do? We can protect ourselves. We can stay clean. We can constantly wash our hands. We can uh, wear a mask. Not just to, because I hear it doesn't really protect us that much, but um, to protect everybody else, right? If we're all wearing masks, then the virus would go down dramatically, uh, I think, as well as stay in. So, you know, once you can let go of the things that are out of your control and just focus on the things that are in your control, life gets so much better. Stress goes away a lot. Because I'll look at things and go, okay, yeah, that's horrible. That's scary. Or that's whatever. But that's out of my control. So this is in my control. I'll focus on this and hopefully it helps that. You know, I'll focus on how much I am practicing my art and hopefully it helps the fact that, you know, my sister, whatever her opinion is of my art, right? And that's how you kind of go about it. All right. Great question, especially in a time like this where there's so much kind of nervousness around there. Hi, Discord person. Yeah, my name is Arki. I'm calling from Sound Therapy. And to do of nervousness, I'm nervous as well. Uh, I Sorry, I'm just trying to... Uh, it's a little hard to hear what you're saying exactly. Okay. Can you take my voice clearly now? I, I can hear you. Uh, it just takes a little bit to understand it because the microphone is... It's pretty echoey, but what, what's your question? Okay, my question is, is, do you ever feel guilty when you don't improve your art? I mean, my question is, uh, when even though I improve, even though I practice more than an hour, and make the most of it, still at the end, when I see a movie, I'm enjoying time with my family, I feel guilty because I'm not making my time to feel and to improve my art at the time to know this feeling? Amazing question. I, I relate with you 100%. Um, right. Yeah, like especially what happened was in the beginning of my career when we're starting the studio, starting the business, you need a lot of energy. You need a lot of time on the business, right? And you got to work at it like nonstop because you're working for yourself and that, that's what was happening to me. So I was, I would get up and I start working until I'm so sleepy and I start falling asleep a couple times and then I just go to sleep and I start the next day the same way. And perhaps it was necessary in the beginning. I would argue that it was necessary in the beginning, but there is a point where it's not as necessary and the things that are necessary for you is to have a balanced life. Not just because, um, because you want to not have everybody hate you and you want to keep your friends, you want to keep your relatives, but also 
so that you can have a better career. Because if you're working all the time, you're not going to have, you're not going to have a, okay, say you're working all the time, your friends go, everybody kind of disappears because they know that you never have time for them. Um, what happens to your happiness? What happens to you as a person? Uh, those exactly. things are necessary as well, right? So, yeah. Uh, and I've had this conversation with some other friends that I know went really hardcore. I go to them. I, I said to one of them, uh, you know, do you, do you like hanging out with people? You know, and he's like, not really. If I have to be honest, no, not really. I'm just thinking about my painting. Uh, and then I go, but you called me out to come out and, you know, have have dinner. And it's like, yeah, because I, f I force myself to uh, call people out. And you're one of my friends. So if I was to hang out with anybody, I'd want to hang out with you or whatever. And I feel the same way. And I told him, yeah, I, I totally feel the same way. I didn't feel like coming out. <laughs> but because I could get some more drawings done, I could get some more paintings done. Um, but, you know, it's something that you can't lose completely. So I think you need to actually work on that to, to spend some time with your friends and your family or whatever and just get a little bit of that balance back, you know. That is the right kind of addiction, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, you got to have this part in your life. You know, so many people that we hear, even like very, very successful, famous people in work, uh, you hear about them, but are they truly successful having, you know, three ex-husbands uh, or three ex-wives uh, and all this stuff and, and never really opening up and, and kind of, having loved ones come in. I see your point. I see your point. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for your call. Thank you, bye bye. Take care. Wonderful. Let's see here. So we have about thirty eight minutes have passed. How's your illustration going? Right? You can look up and see how is mine going um somebody was saying you know we've, we've had some comments where they're like saying uh are you doing anything for corona this this coronavirus time um you know are we doing any sales or things like that this is this is my kind of solution here is to not do any sales, but just to engage the public more and just to be here for for those that want some company and things like that, to do more streams. And this stream here, you can see my background. It's not my studio anymore. Uh, I tried doing a stream at home a few weeks ago and it didn't work out. So. I switched out my internet. We had slow internet on purpose at home because years ago we decided to keep work at work and at home, it's just gonna be home. And there's no computer, there's slow internet, you know, it's like a time for me and my wife to just be with each other. And now this whole work from home thing happened, so I had to switch up my, anyways. Okay, you get it. All right. I would also love, yeah, so uh, for anybody that's you know wondering about what we're doing for coronavirus, I plan on doing a lot more streams. You know, not once a week, but I plan on doing them more than once a week, more than regular. So I'm gearing up to that. Uh, I'm just getting my thoughts in line and uh, getting a plan formed. But we are planning on doing some really fun stuff. 
Uh, for those of you in the chat, I see a whole bunch of you. I would love to know where everybody's from. You know, it's it's such a time of isolation. It'd be really nice to know that there's more people out there just like you and me in the same position hang out together now on the stream. All right. I just love doing little shouts out like that with the, you know, like all these people all around the world, all connecting through their little electronic devices. And, you know, it's like, wow, technology, it still boggles the mind. All right, let's go on to another question here. This one is from Warren, Warren, Warren Year. All right. Hello, how do you stick to... Oh, here comes the shout-outs. All right, holy smokes. Okay, so big shouts out There's people from India here, uh, North Carolina, India, Brazil, Italy, Germany, California, UK, Chile, Poland, Amsterdam, Budapest, Argentina, Slovakia, Ukraine, SoCal, South Korea, Atlanta, Georgia, Malaysia, Indonesia, London, holy smokes, Malaysia, New York City, Israel, Indonesia, Spain, Argentina, Germany, wow, Tanzania, France, Singapore, St. Louis, Brazil, Ukraine, it goes on, right on, that's awesome, wow, glad hey, I Bobby. asked that, yeah, <laughs> I want to say, um, somebody has a question, I don't know how to pronounce your name, this, this? Oh. <laughs> uh, hello, uh, my name is Rosa, I'm from Finland and uh, uh, with the coronavirus and all people and creators have uh, given a lot of content and tutorials on sale and it's been uh, getting this uh, sense of overwhelmed overwhelming as um, I there's so much tutorials and resources online that it's kind of hard to know where to start yeah yeah. And uh, I was thinking uh, about uh, how do you know what to go next, you know, to practice or take up a tutorial and such. I think it's really about the decision making, you know, like it's not necessarily how do you know what the right thing to do is, but to pick something at least somewhat decent, it doesn't have to be the best. You know, if it's like 60, 70 percent or higher of what you want, just to make that conscious decision, OK, I'm not going to do anything else except for this. And, you know, it's interesting because there was that other question previously where it this it, we, I was talking about decision making as well. It's like um, now we have a lot of choices. And that's where you're saying we have a lot of choices. How do you know which one to choose? Same thing in life, you know, especially in the beginning, you might not have as many choices. Then you start doing better. People start seeing you succeed. They want to uh, work with you so that they can hopefully have that same kind of success. But then there's too many people asking you and then it becomes about decisions as well. You know, so being able to make this much simpler decision now of what to concentrate on will help you later when everybody starts knocking at your door going i want this person to work on my project uh you can't take everything there's only a you know a finite amount of time that you have and so making those decisions that to me is a muscle as well you know that we need to exercise to make a decision and to stick with that. So it's more about knowing what you want, and like who you are as a person? Committing. It's not even about knowing what you want. It's about committing to things, to learn about them enough so that you can decide if that's what you want. Okay. Thank you. And You're thank very you for welcome. School is him. Oh, I my pleasure. Appreciate it a lot. Right on. Awesome. Thanks for the call. All right. So 
why don't we go on to uh, this question here. So Warren Year asks, hello, how do you stick or choose a project or group of ideas to bring to completion? There's so many things in my head I want to do and try. It gets frustrating. Start an idea sketchbook. You know, um, that's the first thing that comes to my mind is I'll have a sketchbook just for ideas. And then if I ever run out of ideas, I just go into that idea sketchbook and I look at my half-baked ideas because not all of them are good. And then I have some sort of starting point, you know. Yeah, big shouts out to Masay. I see Masay on there. She's working from home. Anyhow, um, let's go on to the next question here. And if anybody is on Discord and wants to jump in and ask a question, go right ahead. Okay. So the next question here is from Anonymous. Let's see. I really want to stop using social media because it gets really frustrating. But as you mentioned in a video, uh, you said, don't stop posting. How can I balance that? I hear you. You know, it's funny because uh, as, as often as I am on social media, I'm not on social media that often. Let me explain. Um, I will do like turbo sprints on social media. I have something to post. Okay, I'm going to post right now. What am I going to say? I'm, uh, I'm going to say this. And then I just post it. And then I look at it again. And I might change some things, but then that's it. And I'll come back, you know, maybe 10 minutes later, uh, answer a bunch of comments, and then that's it. And you won't see me again. You know, um, because I don't want to spend that much time on social media either. Especially if it's in the wrong way. If it's in a way where it's like inspiring and stuff like that, then sure, that sounds great. But also, inspiration is only to get you inspired to do something else. So we can't just stay inspired all day. Got to go and do something else. Do what that thing inspires you to do. All right. Hi, Bobby. Hi. Hi, hello. Uh, actually, uh, just related to what you were saying, um, I was wondering because I, I don't really like getting too involved in social media either, uh, but I think it's just something unavoidable <laughs> or <laughs> cannot be avoided. Um, so I wonder if you have any insights on which social media are more useful at the moment for, let's say, like animation and illustration. In well, the biggest one is Instagram. I could tell you that. Like when we were going through uh, Lightbox Expo applications, artists that wanted tables and such, it was like... 90% of people had Instagram um, accounts. But then again, sometimes if the party is too big, you might want to go somewhere else because people won't notice you, right? So um, in that kind of case, if you're, if this is to any artist, really, if you're just starting off, um, trying to f try to find your group by going to people somewhat in your category, you know, at your stage. If you're trying to create a group of friends or whatever, a network of people, and they are, you know, 15 years down the road from you and have six figures of followers or something like that that's not very likely right and and a lot of times how we start our careers or how we continue our careers is through the people that we kind of grew up with you know in this sense it'd be like through social media just kind of growing up with these people that 
um, you started off kind of talking to in the very beginning and they started talking to you. Uh, social media, it's a funny thing. You know, I, I don't, it's like, I know the importance of it. Don't yeah. totally like it that much. But um, mm-hmm. with everything, there's good things too. So I guess just try to find that little slice of social media that you find to be enjoyable and just focus on that. That's what I try to do. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, there's so much kind of uh, negative things out there on social media. Which is actually why a big part of why I keep doing things in social media because I want to do something positive. I want to do something fun and positive for people out there, uh, especially for the art community. Okay. Next question here. Anonymous. What can be done or what is the recommendation to earn money with our art or illustration? Uh, well, shoot, that's a pretty broad question. You know, you can do so many things. Uh, you can do, you could work in games, you could work in movies. You know, it's funny because if this situation with quarantine and everything keeps going and going and going, what's going to happen is the only new content on TV is most likely going to be animation because animation could keep going with quarantine. We can't go on the set of some live action thing, you know, but we could all animate, we can all record our voices, we could all uh, edit, composite, all that stuff. It's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, how else to earn money right now with your money or with your <laughs> with your art? I yeah, dep- it, it, this is a really broad question. I'm gonna skip this question because it, it really there's so many different kinds of art as well. Um, I don't think it really makes sense to be able to answer that, especially not knowing that much of you. Um, oh, I have a question, a typed up question in Discord. Mel Griffin asks, my question is how to, how to, uh, YouTube, how to YouTube. And I always want to teach people to do character designs and other things. I'm still not so sure about at the same time. I'm not sure my work is up to the challenge. Best thing to do is just start streaming. You know, if if you're wondering if your stuff is up to up to that level, then just try streaming. And when you stream, try to really think, okay, how much time am I really going to put into this to see if it's worth it? Because Guaranteed, if you have no network, you have no people, you start telling a whole bunch of people to join in and, and uh, be a part of your stream, they won't. Most likely, they won't, right? And it'll take a lot of time, a lot of effort before that channel starts going well. Um, so it's not like a one-time, two-time, five-time thing. Which kind of goes back to the whole entire thing thing about decision making right and the kind of uh, ability to make decisions all right next one here is anonymous what do you recommend for those persons who just oh i hear somebody what's your name where are you from sorry wait hello hi Hey, sorry. Uh, sorry, I, there was a disconnect between the um, oh, no worries. YouTube and this, so I didn't know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hear you. I hear um, you. What's yeah, your I name? Where are you a, from? Oh, uh, I'm Justin. I'm from Ottawa, actually. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I'm not professional or anything like that uh, yet, and I 
I'm just applied to actually go into both the animation and the illustration programs at Algonquin. So, um, but um, seeing as we're in quarantine and all that, and I'm not able to work right now, I've been just delving into like storytelling and stuff. And I was just wondering uh, what tip to have for not, if we're drawing upon inspiration uh, from like, let's say King Arthur, stuff like existing stories like that uh, without necessarily copying them and also what books you rec recommend for storytelling um books you know there's a very simple small book by bill pete uh story artist formerly at disney uh he did he did dumbo he did a lot of like the classics and i love that book because it comes with pictures <laughs> so that's nice oh, to nice. see his his awesome drawings uh what was the other part of the question sorry um just drawing upon inspiration oh from, like, yes stories, like king arthur or like these old myths without necessarily just obviously copying it like well you gotta you, you gotta have something from your your own life like uh for example it's like finding nemo you got this father trying to let go uh, or trying to learn to let go and not be so so kind of helicopter parent over his child right um mm -hmm. king arthur you have a you know there's many different kind of things that you can try to relate to your own life um this whole entire idea of uh, of a clan of a group of friends you know like uh what could perhaps happen there you see where i'm getting at here like for example uh nico and the sword of light that was the tv show that i created with my friends um so that is a story about a, a 10 year old child that was supposed to grow up and to become the the protector of the world Right, but something happens, and he has to do it now. But he's only ten. Mm -hmm. You know that. I'm sure all the other creators can relate to this story in their own way, but um, for me, I when I started my studio, uh, I planned on living at home in my parents' basement to save on rent and all that stuff until I could get off of my feet and get the the studio going. Once I, I started the studio uh, with my brother, my parents said, we're moving to Taiwan. <laughs> Take care of yourself. You know, we, we trust you. We believe in you. T pretty much take care. See you later. So all of a sudden, I was thrown into the situation that I was planning on being in, but it came way too soon. So what do I do now? And that, you see where that kind of, Nico and the Sword of Light relates to my life, right? Yeah. How does King, and that just made it so much more real, so, so much more relatable and all this stuff. So how does the story of King Arthur, how can that relate to your life? And then you could start to bring some real uh, tangible stuff that people can really hold on to and connect with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just those slight differences that... Um... Like, let's say, uh, well, not necessarily in my life, but the betrayal aspect. Like, if I was yeah. betrayed in the past, then just draw upon that, but twist it to more, my, like, had I, uh, just my situation, if that had happened or something. Yeah, like I, I remember uh, seeing this interview with uh, Steven Spielberg, and he was saying that when he was a little kid and his parents were fighting, you know, later on they, they get a divorce or whatever, uh, they were fighting and fighting, and he was just this tiny little kid, and he was—he didn't know what to do, so he just started like bang the door or something and yelling at them, going "Cry baby, cry baby, cry baby!" A tiny little kid, right? Like, mm -hmm. how kind of impactful was that? And then later on, in one of his movies, he has a little—you know—parents fighting. Little kid comes over. I forget if it was Christian Bale in. Uh, uh, Empire of the Sun or I forget what the movie was but starts to yell at them going cry baby cry baby cry you know putting that same part of yeah. his life and 
wow, so powerful and so believable because it comes from real life. And that's what yeah, you're looking that's, for, right? That's cool. All right, well, thanks. This is actually really cool to how technology can have us talk. <laughs> that's sweet. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's nice to get that question from you, Justin. Thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot. Have a great day. Yeah? Well, you too. still listen. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, Patricia also wrote in the chat that Vivian, Vivian has a question. How do you, how did you build up the confidence to do something for the community in the beginning? Um, you know, I, I kind of believe that you don't necessarily need confidence. You don't necessarily need to believe in yourself as long as you are willing to do the things that you feel that confident people would do or people that actually believe in themselves would do and do those things. And then sooner or later, it'll t I, generally, it'll tend to lead you to the right place and then you start to feel confident because things are working. So there you go. All right. Wow. Already an hour has passed. You can see my illustration is getting quite close to finish. We will go for that full 90 minutes though. So keep an eye on your own stuff and uh, keep an eye on the time and see where you need to finish. See what other things you still need to do. This exercise here is really, it's not just uh, how to paint a cat the intricacies of fur, things like that. Uh, this is also about time management. The very first image, it was pretty much just a head and not even two eyes. It was a profile shot and you had 90 minutes to do that, right? This one can be a lot more challenging because it's a full on cat with two eyes, you know, it's facing you and it's got the two, you know, it's got the body, legs, everything, right? And it just makes it that much more, uh, that much more difficult. So did I want to paint this thing totally photo real? Yeah, when I see fur, I generally want to render the heck out of it, but I couldn't in this case. Right, I could only, I could only have ninety minutes to work on this. So, how am I going to be economical? I do hope that many of you will try this challenge again, even after this attempt that you're doing right now, because uh, so much more can be learned. And right now, uh, I remember as. I'm doing these exercises more and more I'm thinking about my speed and the choices that I'm making in the things that I will concentrate on and the things that I'll paint some things should be simplified you know some things perhaps shouldn't be simplified and so on and so forth okay Smoochie, Smoochie asks a question. Hi, Smoochie. My name is Mohammed. I'm from Saudi Arabia. I was having problems with my mic, so I couldn't speak. I couldn't, you know, speak the question. I was wondering when you can tell if somebody is ready to start taking commissions, or you feel like my work is worth the money, and if so, how do you go about pricing your work? All right. When should you start taking commissions? I think when people are giving you an opportunity, if you have time for that opportunity, then take the commission, try it. Um, the other part to this is pricing your work. Now, this was something that I remember being taught in school and how they would say to price your work is, okay, well, how much do you want to earn per hour? Let me... Uh, think about how many hours this project will take and then add in whatever buffer time, like maybe revisions and things like that. And then that's your quote. That's what I was taught and that's that didn't go well. 
um, I keep it simple. Think about how much th the client's budget is. What do you think their budget is? Then if you really want the project, you could quote them that. You can quote slightly less, perhaps like 10% less. Uh, maybe 15% less if you really want this job. And then if you have a lot of work and you don't really care either way, then I would charge them a lot more. Maybe 10, 20% more than what their, what you think their budget is. And that's it. And then of course, if what you think their budget is, is way too low, then, then your regular wages and you're not willing to work for that, uh, then just tell them your regular wages, you know, and think about it like that. Hey, I see an old friend on there, Mara from Italy. Hey, Mara. Great to see you on the stream. All right. Mara's an awesome artist as well. So definitely check out her work. Okay, so let's go to uh, another question on Slido here. From Anonymous, what do you recommend for those persons who just graduated from university? I'm asking these uh, mostly because in many places, oh, they ask for previous experience. Okay, let me tell you something. If your stuff is amazing, they will not care about your previous experience. Um, imagine like, you know, Disney says, hey, we're open for portfolios, no uh, previous experience required. How many more portfolios will they have to sift through? Will they have to review, right? Way too many. And so that's why um, they might put something like that. Like, okay, well, if we say you need three years experience, then we'll still get 200 great portfolios. We might miss out on uh, one or two, but that's okay, right? Because we'll get the job filled. So, uh, yeah, don't worry about that and just post your stuff and or not post your stuff, but you know, apply. Go and hand it in. Try to look professional. How do you look professional? Uh, best way is to give yourself a project and start doing it. And start doing it in a way where you're thinking, okay, well, I need to, I need to show my work each stage. I need to. Um, yeah, show each stage to the person I'm working for. So I'm gonna put in my portfolio the sketches to the render, the finished illustration, the finished concept. Um, and what are the other characters in this project? Right, and so on and so forth. If you're putting in stuff that looks like, um, if it looks like student work, then you'll have a harder time. However, if your student work looks amazing, looks really professional, then uh, there's always there's always exceptions. But I, I could tell you that the whole, how many years of experience did you have? That shouldn't stop any of us. It's really just something that a lot of people say so that they won't get a million portfolios and have to look through them. All right. Yeah, so right now there's 20 minutes left, okay? I'm pretty much done this illustration, but you keep going, finish it up, you know, look at the Look at the reference, look at the time, 
what other stuff do you want to do before you finish and remember in the bottom right hand corner when you post your image hashtag it 90 minute art challenge and that way everybody can see it and that way when I want to show people um, all the other wonderful submissions that people have done uh, then I can do that on the next stream. Let's see. And there's so much fun. Look at that one. So creative, right? So you can do these illustrations however you like. And we can all check them out if you give it the hashtag. That's a great one. Very nice design. And did the mirror image. Lens flare. That's cool. There are so many just from the very first challenge. So hopefully we can see even more cats this time uh, now that we've done the second challenge. All right. So next question here, Anonymous asks on Slido, what are your thoughts on create, creative pri privacy, having a pen name? Also not feeling confident showing your art to people you, you know, family, friends. Yeah. Um, well, let's start off with confidence showing your art to people you know. I, I, I just, and these are, it's just my opinion, but I don't like to have any kind of hopes when I'm showing my family and friends. You know, I'm, and I'm just saying that because generally, uh, you know, my wife, she's a brilliant artist and she's so better than me in so many different aspects of art. Uh, so generally is she's one of my toughest critics and I love her for that. Uh, cause she, is always right <laughs> everything that she tells me to do or change about my art i remember if, at first in the very beginning getting kind of frustrated right because i was waiting for that good uh kind of pat on the head that good compliment uh but it wasn't like that it was like oh you you know you could do that you could do this you should do that um all these things but now I really appreciate it. You know, I, I'm always showing her work and not expecting that she will like it at all. <laughs> and that's totally fine with me. Um, yeah. I think it's really... I found that uh, my upbringing, because my mom, same kind of thing. You know, I show her art. I'm a tiny little kid. She tells me my perspective wrong, is wrong, my proportions are wrong, this and that. And it was all very uh, justified. And because, and then my dad, you know, he loves me. But like I said, if he didn't know it was my art and he just saw it out there in the world, would he like it? Probably not. So because of all this, um, I became a lot more okay with my own art, you know, cause somebody had to be. My brother is my biggest cheerleader for sure. He loves everything that I do. And I love him for like to pieces for that. Um, yeah, but you know how some people, they hate their art even though everybody likes it. I'm okay, you know, I'm like, nah, it's not that bad. I tried my hardest On to the next thing. So, the last part of the question here is thoughts on um, having a pen name. I dig it. I almost changed my name to having like a pen name because uh, I was I was concerned that my last name Chu C H I U would confuse people. Ended up not doing it, but um, some of my friends they have awesome pen names. 
and I love it. Like uh, Lowish, everybody knows Lowish. Uh, everybody knows Coro, uh, or they should know Coro. Brom um, is somebody I I don't know too well. You know, met him a few times. Seems like an awesome person, but has a killer name. That's for damn sure. Brom, uh, Knox. Yeah, there's a bunch. I like it. All right. And we have 15 minutes left, everybody. 15 minutes left in your illustrations. Get them done. Now, if you want to follow along with the way that I did things, again, I'll just explain a little bit here. The very first attempt that I did of the cat was this one. This was with the same exact uh, silhouette as the reference. So there's a bit of a handicap there. You know, I have some help because I started off with a silhouette where I just traced the silhouette and then began the illustration like that. The second version that I did was I drew it myself, right? So I had a blank canvas and had to try to draw the cat the same way and everything. And I actually like this one more. The third version is a second attempt at that. Drawing it yourself again, doing the whole entire thing, 90 minutes, uh, or actually all of these, I only gave myself an hour. So the proportions and things, it's not all there, definitely not. Um, but it's the whole, it's the whole act of uh, trying to get in all that information as much as possible. That was the most important thing. Right, and learn how this cat works, how this photo works. The next version, the fourth attempt, I did the mirror image of the cat, but I had the silhouette again. Okay, so I just mirrored the silhouette, I flopped it, and so I had a silhouette to start off with. Much easier. And then this one, I drew it myself, right? I'm just drawing it myself painting it one hour. Sixth attempt, now I'm doing it straightforward, not the mirror image time, stuff in the cat, and so on and so forth, and this is only week two. Um, what I would also recommend with this is to study art. Uh, has it frozen? Okay, I think we're back. Are we back? Okay, well, um, it's saying it's not receiving enough video to maintain a smooth streaming. Okay, I hopefully it's back now. Uh, yeah, so I would study like this, but from life itself. So maybe just like the same view out your window six or seven times, maybe more. You can always go more. Uh, a bunch of studies like this from a photograph. And then you could do uh, a bunch of studies like this from art. Because when you're studying somebody's art, you're studying their interpretation of that thing, of life, right? Which will bring whole new insights just don't stick to one artist. Study the heck out of that artist and then move on to another artist and study the heck out of them and so on and so forth until you have a million different ways to do the exact same thing. When you have that kind of um, knowledge stored, built up you know, in your mental library, then you have unlimited choices, you know, in how you will represent stuff. So then when you do represent stuff, in other words, when you draw, right, when you're drawing something, the way that you represented that thing, 
speaks about you as a person, right? It, it, um, it's not just because, well, you studied that one person, so that's why you paint like that. No, you studied all these different people and you paint like this because you naturally kind of gravitate towards furry things. <laughs> you know, like I love drawing fur for some reason. I don't know why. All right. And we have seven minutes left, everybody. Finish up your illustrations and don't forget to upload it. 90 minute art challenge. Yeah, I also wanted to let you know that we'll be doing the stream again next week. Challenge number three is this one. So this is going to be the next illustration. I will have this up uh, on my YouTube page within the hour of when this stream stops. So if you're not watching this live, you can go to my YouTube page and you can find this, uh, the next challenge here. This one's a good one. It's again, mainly a person's head, but now you have a three quarter view, slightly on a tilt, and you have this very uh, dramatic lighting, right? Look at that. One of her eyes is so much lighter than the other one. <laughs> I really liked that aspect of this photo, but I also liked the, uh, the challenge of contrast here. You can see that the values in the darkness have very little contrast, but then the parts in the light have extreme amounts of contrast. So that would be a really fun one to do. How do you do this in 90 minutes, right? Um, I will have that photo up for everybody to download and study for next week, for next week's challenge. And if you want to do the same thing as me, do one a day until the seventh day. And the seventh day, that's the one to do out of your imagination. Okay, so let's see here. Let's go to another question. Got five minutes left. So Anonymous asks, uh, says, for years I practiced figure drawing, but I'm not improving anymore. Should I switch to another exercise or do something else on top of figure drawing? I'm assuming that you, that you might not have a different focus when it comes to figure drawing. Figure drawing, it's like, it's like this one photo times so much more, so many more layers to it, right? And if it's live, all of a sudden you don't have exposure fixed. You need to figure out the exposure as well. You need to f figure out the focus as well. Um, so I think figure drawing could be something that you are just learning for the rest of your life even. Uh, I would say to focus on another exercise. If you if you want to just focus on something completely different, you could totally do that. But if you wanted to stay with figure drawing because you like figure drawing and you're not improving as much anymore, then there's many different ways to figure draw. Right, You can work on that. I remember uh, I didn't understand how to shade something, to render something. So my figure drawings at the time uh, were very linear. It was pre pretty much just line drawings. So then for the next bunch of months, I stopped drawing lines. I said, I'm only gonna draw, put down patches of tone. And through those patches of tone, I will create a figure. Very different, very, very different. Um, 
and at first it looked horrible but through consistence right consistence of effort uh, it eventually started to look like something and then now you know I can render I know how to render so there you go all right two minutes last question How do you stay motivated when you feel down or in these times? Does that impact your work? This is the thing. Right now we are in um, some troubling times. You know, it's, it's not so hot out there right now. Uh, but we will get through this and things will be awesome after. Generally, after you know, bad things come good things if we remain positive. A uh, hundred years ago, it was the Spanish flu, right? Took out, I think, like 5% of the population in the world. We don't have something even close to that. 5% of like, what, 8 point something billion people would be a tremendous amount a tremendous amount of, uh, of people. Um, but then you hear about the roaring 20s after the Spanish flu, how every... Was it the roaring 20s? Or, you know what? Um, <laughs> maybe not the roaring 20s, but uh, what I'm saying is, I'm going to stop with that little story because I'm probably getting all my facts messed up so many times in my life when uh, I had every reason to feel bad to feel sad to feel uh, unmotivated but I chose not to I chose to turn the other way and get pumped up get rejuvenated get energized, get motivated, determination, all that stuff, I have been rewarded. Whether it relates to the thing that I'm doing or not, a lot of times it totally doesn't. And it comes out of left field and all of a sudden this new person joins the studio and they're so amazing. I, I'm just like, wow, I can't believe I, I was so lucky. I believe that a lot of those things came to be because I remain positive. This is just life's test, everybody. You know, life is testing us to ask us, how badly do we want a good life? How badly do we want um, improvements in our lives? Because if we really want it, you got to stay positive and you got to keep doing good things and then life will reward you. And one thing about this is it doesn't matter if it's true or not. Because if, you, uh, if you're constantly thinking this way, then you'll generally you'll always remain positive. You'll always keep trying. And, you know, even if you don't succeed in the very, very end, I think you could be very proud of yourself that you tried. It's way worse if you wasted your life and had all these dreams and didn't try, right? That would be the worst. So um, yes, these times can be challenging, but that's a huge opportunity for us because life is challenging us all, testing us all to see how much do we really want it. Do we really deserve it? Because if we do, focus on those good things. Know that this is life's test. Remain positive. Keep doing positive things. And, and that's it. I think this is a good time to um, thank everybody for joining the stream. Don't forget about next week's stream. You can look for it on my YouTube channel. Uh, and be ready because I'll be back spreading art, positivity, and uh, come do these uh, challenges with me. 
All right. This is Bobby Chu signing off. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day.